Scottsdale. What a bowling! Scottsdale! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. Can he go on the outside? Comes inside. Comes up. shot. Oh, what a goal. Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserves the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest instalment of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redmond, head of this weekend's trip to Hillsborough to take on Sheffield Wednesday in the EFL Championship. The international break is officially over and you may have noticed that during the international break, I do tend to normally like to put out content. I'll normally get an interview with one of the local journals or maybe even get the lads together. This time I just had a week off and I hope you can all forgive me. I just thought, you know what? I'll spend some time with the family. I'll have some. And and even on Twitter, I didn't even really go on Twitter too much. So I hope you can all forgive me. Um, And some news as well, some personal news. We have been nominated for the uh, fan channel podcast or fan media of the season at the Northwest Football Awards. Obviously, you'll you'll all be aware that we were nominated for two awards as well at the Football Content Awards, which is down in London later next month, but we've now been nominated for a third award. So all I can say is thank you to everybody who listens. Thank you to everybody who watches or even just follows us on social media, because if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be getting these nominations. So a massive thank you, and I really do appreciate all the support as well. Uh, and speaking of people who are nominated at the Football Content Awards, I am pleased to introduce Ash from the Wednesday week. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, Joe. Yeah, it's good to be amongst other award-nominated uh, podcasts, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a meeting of great minds, I think this will go down as. Uh, speaking of the international break, obviously, England have just announced Thomas Tuchel uh, will be yeah. the uh, new manager of England starting in January. A German in charge of England. What's all that about? But I'm talking about this because, of course, you have a German in charge of Sheffield Wednesday. Um, how how are you? How are you thinking about your German? How are you thinking about the the the, the fact that Germans are now in charge of uh, of England and and huge English clubs like yourselves? Uh, obviously, as a Sheffield Wednesday fan, it, I, I love it. I think <laughs> obviously we it's well documented last season's uh, great escape uh, with Danny Rule taking over from Cisco Munoz um, after his disastrous start. Let's let's be right, well it was. Yeah, um, love him, really do um, a lot. Nine, and, and I don't speak for Wednesday fans. Our podcast or myself, but I would imagine there's ninety nine point nine percent of Wednesday fans are truly on the Danny Rule train. Um, yes, this season's been a bit mixed at the minute, but it's um, the good feelings there, and it's still there. So for me, yeah, um, Danny Rule, German manager at Sheffield Wednesday, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on um, Thomas Tuchel. I, I, I don't, I don't really care that much to be honest. I do watch yeah, a bit of international it. football and uh, yeah, the Euros, um, but yeah, um, on that thing, if he wins as a World Cup, will anyone care? Probably not. I think I will. If I'm honest with you. I do, you. I do. I do. I do. I. I. I went to France in 2016. I went to Portugal in 2017. I think it was. But recently, I've kind of fallen out of love with it because the football has just been so tedious. So I'm hoping um, that Tuchel can can bring me back in. But anyway, 
Let's get to the more important things. Burnley versus, well, Sheffield Wednesday versus Burnley this weekend. Let's talk all things Sheffield Wednesday. That, of course, is the point of the pre-game show. That's why we have a Sheffield Wednesday fan here. So talk to me about your season so far. Just looking at the league table now, mate, you are down in 15th. Um, after, no, 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 you know, up in 15th. Up in 15th. Sorry, up in 15th. Is that how you say it over there? Sorry, up in 15th. Up in 15th. But, you know... It, yeah. It, you started the season very well um, with a, an impressive win against Plymouth, um, but then it did get a little bit leery. To be fair, you played two good clubs in Sunderland and Leeds, lost both for them, uh, but then a 3-0 defeat at Millwall, that's that's obviously a, a, would have been a tough one to take. A, a draw at home to QPR um, and then a defeat against Luton. Again, not the worst result in the world and all Luton haven't been great it this was. season. Since it, then, it though, was. last last three games... Decent result against West Brom. Beat them at home, which is obviously yeah. where we are this weekend. Um, a draw away to Bristol City. A draw away from home is never to be sniffed at, in my opinion. Uh, and then a win at Coventry. So, you know, you, you've have you, have, have you turned a corner? Yeah, yeah, I think so. The, the seven points from the last nine against uh, uh, a couple of... Well, all three great teams, I've, I've got to say. Like you said, the Bristol away midweek point is is great result uh, it wasn't a very good game at all um but going back joe um you look at the millwall result um uh, we looked at millwall and qpr of teams that are around us so same sort of lower mid table uh, where we are at the minute uh and the millwall one really hurt and the qpr one we scored like in the 92nd minute and they scored in the 94th a ridiculous mm. scramble goal and um, so them two results were really kicking the teeth for us uh, after a great start, um, Sunderland leads. Yes, great teams. They're going to be up there at the end of the season. Um, but then, yeah, turn, turned it around. West West Brom, a great win at home. And um, and then the last time out, Coventry City, a uh, last-minute goal from Shea, Shea Charles. So, yeah, um, 15, I'd say that's about right for us. Um, the Luton game, we should have won that. We got robbed yeah. there. Um, it would have been a great result. Um I know you get you guys had a great results to start the season. Um, they're not doing too great, are the loot in the minute? But it's it's it. But nine games in, we are where we are. Um, it could be a lot better, just purely on the results. But it's something building on. Um, unbeaten in three, going into what was the weekend game. Yeah, obviously a good place to be in after the uh, for, for the international break as well. Obviously, we you put it this way: you've been in better form over your last three games than we have, uh, and we've played probably worse teams in that as well. Um, so, what, what's changed then? Because obviously, the, 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 there's a stark contrast in results from the early part of the season in the last three games. So, has there been a change in personnel, a change in tactics? What, what, what's different? Um, I think the the main change for personnel wise is bringing Shea Charles in. So Shea Charles from Southampton, he was a fifteen million pound signing for themselves from Man City, and we've brought mm. him in for a season loan. Uh, obviously, the, the brother of Pierce Charles, who's our third choice keeper or second choice, depending at the minute because uh, Ben Hame is injured. Um, he's been a revelation, absolutely well, well above um, Sheffield Wednesday sort of player. Um, you can see why fifteen million pound. He played thirty, I think he played thirty-two games for Saints last season in their promotion um, side. Yeah. So, so he's been, he's been a great great asset. Um, and I think just just in all in all the the team, and it's easy to say, but I think the team ethic and the way they they bonded and and really played. There's there's been some players, Akin Fameiwo, who plays left centre back, has been really he's upped his game. Um, he's been really good. Uh, and there's been other players. I mean, everyone talks about Barry Bannon. So Barry Bannon is, is loving life with Shea Charles on the side of him. Um, and, and we've got two wide wide, wide players in Gasama and Masaba that uh, are starting to score goals as well now, which is great. So it's looking good. Um, I can't put my finger on one thing. If Danny Rules give him a rocket at, in the training you know, over the last few weeks, but the teams we've played, it's, it's not like you said, Joe, it's not like we've played three of the worst teams in the league and got seven points. We've played two teams that are going to be up there, West Brom and Coventry. Yeah. So. 
Well, West Brom, I think, might be. I'm not sure on Coventry. Um, depends if, if they, 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 it's not, not, it's not, not the way they played. Season, not, not the way they played. Not slow every season, to be fair to Coventry. Yeah, so they, they might do it again and, and come up. But they are a decent side, but they obviously started pretty slowly. Um, interestingly, I think Robbins might be getting the boot soon um, if results don't improve. Um, but we'll see. Less of that anyway. Let's right. keep concentrating on the important things. Um Talk to me about your aspirations for the season then, please, mate. Obviously, last season, you've mentioned it already, um, managed to stay up. Miracle that you did stay up, obviously, after after the um, the slow start that you had. So what were your aspirations at the start of the season? I would presume that once you've stayed up in this league, the plan will be to obviously improve and kick on and, and maybe aim towards mid-table, a late push for playoffs, maybe even sneak in. So what what's your aspirations for the season? I think uh, a lot of Wednesday fi- fans did have quite a high expectations and aspirations for this season. Uh, I see, I'm sure some, I see or some between six and eight in the league, which would be fan- obviously would be fantastic. Me personally, I said around about tenth to twelfth, mid mid table, up up operating around Bristol City, Swansea City area. You know those teams that have been there for, for years in mid table. Preston only the around there as Preston well. Preston as well, well. yeah. Uh, not going up. Probably not going to go down. Uh, so I I would snap your hands off for that. I know it doesn't sound very optimistic or, or very thing, but I do think we have a lot of work still to do. And I think mm. with the right manager, if he if he gets great results, we are going to lose games. We know we're going to lose games. But it's not losing your head as fans, as, as the team. Um, if we do, like we say, we lost at, at Millwall. It's, it's going to take something... A building job for the next 12, 18, 24 months for me for, for Danny Rule. And if it is 10th, 12th this season, and then maybe next season, 8th to 6th, this building, I don't, we're not going to do an Ipswich. It's, it's, not, it's not, I would love it, of course, and I'll take it. If we're up there at the end of the season, I'm, I'm not going to sit and, and curse it. Of course I wouldn't, but realistically for me, um, 10th to 12th with some, with some good performances and good, some good wins. Maybe a couple of uh, wins in the derbies as well. I, t- I take I tell them all day. I hate them <laughs> myself personally, derbies. I really do. But yeah, um, if we can, if we can repeat yourselves from uh, last season, obviously getting the maximum points against Sheffield United, then a lot of yeah. a lot of teams, a lot of fans in blue and white would uh, would love that. Yeah, fair enough. And you, to be fair, you said there it might not be you know overly optimistic, only finishing between tenth and twelfth. But all you can do is improve. Like improving, you, if 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 you improve year on year, that that's all you can do. So I, I see that completely. Um, talk to me about your aspirations then now. now. Now the season started. You've seen how you've played. You've 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 sort of like seen. You know, you've got a taste for the style you're going to play. The, the the level of where you're at. Are your aspirations still mid table, or you're just thinking now? Okay, let's. Let's just stay up. No, no, I think it's still mid-table. Um, you, you see the results I've mentioned against West Brom and mm. Coventry, but then you see the results against Millwall. And you've still got that. I mean, Millwall battered us 4-0 last season at home. Um, so you still got those sorts of results in you. And you can only go, I, I believe you can only improve in them when you're knocking them sorts of, res- them sorts of results off. You, yeah. You, you're, you're coming back either 2-0, you, you're getting a draw. Yes, it might be at home, but that's a point more than a, a 3-0 loss. You're, you're just incremental winning. You, you are picking up three points against Leeds away. Do you know what I mean? You're getting the results that some people are going to look at and go, oh, actually, yeah. Uh, we, we saw it last season with Plymouth beating Leicester when, when they were down there. We got some great results. Um, there was Leeds losing. It was That's the sort of... That's the sort of results that I think, Pete, personally, as a fan, that we're going to look at to to improve on, and and stop the Millwall or like like Cardiff results. We haven't played them yet, but do you know what I mean? You're going into those games, definitely three points, definitely three points. Yeah, that, that sort of mentality. Um, yeah. So for me, I'm still still going for tenth to twelve. Boring, I know, but you know, it's an improvement from last season. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, some teams, like I said, that's all you can do, improve. And some teams would love to be 10th and 12th. I'm sure uh, the likes of Cardiff and Preston at the end of the season would absolutely root your hand off for that. Um, talk to me about some of your players then. What sort of players should we be looking out for? Like, If you're going to hurt us, which players are are, are going to do it? 
So we're we're lucky. We've got some we've got some great players out on the wide. Like uh, we've got Kasama, uh, Jedi Kasama scored um, the first goal against Coventry. He's looking a real good threat. He's got pace. He's direct, uh, and we could see against Coventry he can, he can hit a ball as well. Um, and then on the other side, you've got Masaba. Um, he's, he's the same. He's di- a little bit wasteful at sometimes, but he has got a goal in him. Um, and they're the two for me that are, are going to be the, a wide attacking threat. But the man at the minute uh, for club and country, Shea Charles. I mentioned him. Shea Charles is is an outstanding footballer. He is really dri- dri- driving that midfield. Um, we've we've been re- relying on Barry Bannon for ne- well nearly ten years now. He's been at the club. Yeah. Uh, he's coming up to thirty five. So obviously his his legs. His le- I'm going to say his legs are going, but they're not. <laughs> but I think with that twenty year old at the side of him, I think that midfield pairing has really really come on. Um, and the only it's not it's not a disappointment because his 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 hold up play and the way he's been playing. Ek Ugbo, we signed him after a great loan spell, and um, he's just not hit the net yet. So I'm mm. I'm rooting for him. I think he's once he gets that goal off his chest, off his bum, off his head, wherever it comes from, I think he'll he's going to be a great asset. Um, so yeah, we have we it's 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 good Sheffield Wednesday at the minute. The attacking threat we've got. Uh, even though we haven't scored a hat full of goals, but we, we're there. We, we're getting there. Interesting that, because I do feel like we are weaker at fullback. That's our weakest area. So if you've got some decent wide players, that that, that could be an issue for us, um, to be fair. Uh, and, and midfield as well. Uh, obviously, Shea Charles can do well in midfield on Saturday. Um, you might get some joy there, um, as I do feel that parts of our midfield, I won't mention any players before I get loads of abuse again, but parts of our <laughs> midfield can can be quite um, suspect. And interestingly, you said there, Barry, when I think of Barry Bannon, I think of an old man because he's been he's been at you, you guys for years. Like we were playing against Barry Bannon like years ago. Like yeah. he's younger than me. I thought he were, I thought he were an old man. He's actually younger than me. And I, I am shocked and appalled to hear that Barry Bannon is younger because he doesn't look it. Uh, it must be my Beautiful hairline, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I, I'm shocked to hear that. I'm, I'm quite upset. It, really. um, it's, but, uh, uh, it's, sorry, sorry. Well, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Um, he's yeah. still, and and he, I, I've been critical of him in the past. And I don't know a lot of Wednesday fans will go down mad or anything like that. But sometimes he's, he's petulant. He's running around like a headless chicken, you know, chasing the ball down, making silly tackles, getting booked. But the last year, 18 months, it seems that he's really calmed that down. He's still running, tracking the ball, but he's not making those silly fouls or diving in. Yeah. Um, and he does seem to have calmed down on their screaming and shouting at, at the refs and things like that. He still does it to the to, to his own players as a captain should, but he has. Um, and I do think that, yeah, he's, he's not, no signs of slowing down. Yeah, maybe he's just finally matured them. Maybe he's, he got to 33 and thought, I can't be arsed anymore. I, I need to grow up. Um, I do want to talk about your manager, though. I know you've alluded to him slightly. Um, what's the general feeling among Sheffield Wednesday fans? I presume you've still got more than enough credit in the bank after last season? Yeah, yeah, he has. The fans love him. Um, yeah, I know we went through a bit of a sticky patch uh, the, the, the games after Plymouth. Um, and... The way that we played against Bristol City, even though it was a great, I, I thought it was a great draw. It was a horrible game, really horrible, boring game. Um, there's always the social media side of, of people, if you look on Twitter and X and all that, that that do have it. But preaching like, to the choir, mate. Yeah, the, there's, <laughs> the vast, vast majority of Sheffield Wednesday fans will will be on the Danny Rule train, and yeah. you will hopefully see that. Uh, with a great result for Wednesday at the weekend, you'll see the love that the fans have got for him. And for for me, for for a manager that's come, I know it was in England before with Southampton as an assistant to uh, Hassan yeah. Holt. And for him to be took as Wednesday fans have took to him, I think it's quite remarkable. It does help that he, he kept us up, um, of course, but I think he's got so much in the bank uh, with regards to Wednesday fans. Yeah, and to be fair, so we should. I think he did a very good job last season. Um, yeah, it's it's been nine games. I've already seen some Burnley fans calling for Parker to be sacked. Like, yes, the last three games weren't great. I completely agree with that. Uh, but come on, nine games. Um, it's it's just the way of the world these days, though, isn't it? There's always 
um, some fans uh, that are like that. Um, just looking more towards the game then this weekend, any injuries or suspensions on your side that we need to be aware of? No, not that I recall. Uh, Dominic Orfa, who's uh, who's not played much this season, he's been out. I think he's back training. Um, not seen anything from the international guys that have been away. Um, no injuries. Um, Deshaun Bernard, our centre half, didn't go uh, to Jamaican duty because he, he said he was injured. But there's no reports. They might have just been precautionary, or he's got a little twinge that he just wanted to rest for a week. But um, so I think we're all. Pretty much, uh, pretty much fit. Yeah, fair enough. That is a big shame. No, I'm only joking. It's it's, it's, it's never <laughs> nice to see players in. Obviously, we, we've we've just been told that Lyle Foster won't be playing this weekend. Yeah. There might be some. Burnley that is fans a shame. That, yeah, there, well, there might be some Burnley fans that see that as good news, mate. Um, <laughs> I I do I do tend to find that I'm sticking up for Lyle a lot, uh, and he's not really helping me in that battle because he, he has been poor this season. Scored a scored a goal against Blackburn um, with the header early on, which was obviously cancelled out. Um, but yeah, he, he's, he's not been great this season. But I don't think he's had great service personally. But that's a different debate. Anyway, um, let's. You, obviously, I've just recently done a podcast for you. You asked me my thoughts on Wednesday and and where they're at this season and and stuff like that. Where do you think sort of like Burnley are? What do you feel? Uh, uh, sorry, what's your opinion on Burnley as a club? Is what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, I think uh, you, you look at Burnley. Obviously, last season you. You're a Premier League team, a Premier League club that's that's come down, um, and you always look at those those guys with envy um, coming down. With it wasn't great for you last season. I take that on board, but you've been there. You've been to the promised land. You've had that, and I know we spoke on our podcast. It's probably the worst time you've you've had as a Burnley yeah, fan. Yeah, it's, it's not all it's cracked up to be anymore, mate. Like, don't get me wrong. We had some good times in the Premier League over the last ten years, but I think the gap's getting a bit wider. But that's a different debate again. Yeah, it's uh, so to, to see you back in the championship um, with the players you've got, and we spoke about obviously some of your signings that were there last season but have, have been re signed. And Scott Parker, mixed thoughts about him at Bert, Bert Bournemouth and, and how he is as a manager, but he's sitting pretty at third at the minute. So you, you, only, you only lost once against Sunderland this season, I believe. So I'd swap places with you at the minute. Yeah, fair enough. It's uh, <laughs> and you know, just to, you know, there's always some mitigating circumstances around that um Sunderland game as well. There was a lot of um unease surrounding it because we didn't know who what players were being sold and stuff. Like we were selling players every single day. Then Josh Browner's interview after it were like, I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. We don't know who's going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Maxime Esteve said similar things. It said it's unsettling. Um, so I, do, do I think we'd have beat Sunderland? Um. Potentially not. Um, probably be nil nil knowing us. Um, but yeah, that, that's the only game we've lost. And obviously they're they're they're, they're decent. They're up there at the minute. So you know, fingers crossed we can continue that. Obviously, that the main issue for us is scoring goals, going forward, creating chances. But we do look absolutely superb at the back. But we are set up in a way that helps that as well. Uh, but we have got some very good defenders. Um, uh, I think I said on your show, uh, Maxime Estebe, in my opinion, uh, is the best defender in the championship. And I, and I do believe he goes on to, to play for France. I do believe he goes on to play for some huge clubs as well. Um, and we still have Jordan Bayer at the club. Like, he might not play this season, but he's a fantastic defender as well. Um, I did say that he will play for Germany and stuff, but I think now he's, he's spent like two years out injured. He might not do. Um, but anyway, um, talk Joe, to me. Joe, Wait, Joe, on, mate. Sorry, on that. Do you play three at the back or do you play four? We we saying that your 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 full back. It's four three two one. Sorry. Four two three one. That's that's the way we do it. It's the form. It's it's the modern day four four two. Everybody plays it. It's <laughs> it's four two three one. I, I don't like the two personally. I don't see the point in having two double pivots these days, as mm. people call them. Have two players up front. Um, but yeah, it's strange because we played four two three one at home to Preston and at home to Plymouth, and you're just thinking, just just release the handbrake a little bit, and you don't need two defensive midfielders. I, I know the midfield can be a little bit fluid for Burnley, whereas, you know, uh, Hannibal will move forward into the 10 or into the sort of like box-to-box position and 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 Brown will, will drop back and things like that. But I do sometimes think it's 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 overkill sometimes in midfield for us. But uh, yeah, we play four at the back uh, with the two full-backs. Uh, and like I said earlier, I do think that's 
um, where we are at our weakest. And we're just going to ask sort of like how how are you expecting Sheffield Wednesday to set up? Because there's been an issue recently with with Burnley that they're struggling to break teams down when they just sit in and refuse mm-hmm. to play any football. Are you expecting Sheffield Wednesday to come at us? Are you expecting to attack us, or are you expecting you to just just sit in and say come and break us down? No, I don't. I don't think on that on that last point there, Danny Rule has has ever gone out um, like that for, for any of his football matches for Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, we play three at the back. Um, we play uh, w- wing backs that it'll probably either be Max Lowe um, and uh, might be Valentin or Jan uh, Valerie, uh, and then we play two in midfield. I mentioned them, Charles and uh, Bannon, and then we play one up top. Um, and then either side, Gasama, Masaba, Windass, um, or Jamalo. So we've got we've got mm. quite a good attacking thing. So that's that's how Danny Rule has set up for the majority of his games this season, and I, I can't see that being any different. Um, it worked well against Coventry, um, and then the home game against West Brom. Like I've said on, on our podcast, I think it was the the best half of football we've played this season, going in against top of the league at the time, West Brom two 0 Yeah. Um, Obviously, we let it slip, but then managed to get back and obviously the mentality of the guys to get the goal um, in the last last minutes. Um, so, yeah, I don't see that being any different, especially at home against uh, against Burnley. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear, to be fair, because even if it does mean you come at us and, you know, you get a couple of goals, hopefully it'll be an entertaining game because Preston, Plymouth and Oxford had, had no intention of playing any any, any football. And that's not me criticising them, that's just me saying as I see it. I, I, I've always said a million times, as Burnley fans watching Sean Dyche and loving the Sean Dyche way uh, for so long. It, it, it's a bit hypocritical for us to sit there and go, come on, come and play some football. But we want you to play football because I think it will suit us. Unfortunately, I've, I've, had, I've had a notification off the laptop to say I've only got 10% battery remaining. And it's because I've just finished work and then straight away we did your show. So we are a little bit pushed for time, unfortunately. But we, we, we've, just got past on. Yeah, right, <laughs> we've just got past 25 minutes. So I do think that's a good time. But very quickly, mate, just a couple of things to round the show off. What's your prediction for this weekend, please, mate? Uh, I'm going to stick with what I've said previously. So I'm going to go 1-0 Wednesday. Um, I think it's going to be quite an entertaining game, to be honest. Um, and I think we'll, we'll we'll score in the second half. And I don't think we'll sit back on the 1-0, but I think it just will be 1-0. Fair enough. If you are going to come out, I know I have said previously 1-0 to Burnley and I'll stand by that now because that's just how the majority of our games have gone. I've sat here with an Oxford fan and said, nah, we'll beat you 3-0. I've then sat here with a Plymouth fan and said, we'll beat you 4-0, 3-0, something like that. And then with a Preston fan, I just said, probably 1-0 to us. Um, so, my predictions have been reined in a little bit now because I've seen us play like a style of football where we don't really put teams to the sword. Um, so, I mean, I'll take 1-0, but if you are going to come at us, I'm hoping that it is a little bit more entertaining and we can get some goals. Um, just before we do finish it, mate, can you let everyone know where they can find you and your content if they want to digest some of your stuff, hopefully after the Burnley win on Saturday? <laughs> yeah, you will uh, Yeah, you can see it, find us all on uh, the social medias. Uh, we're, we're all over TWW cast on Twitter or X, apologies, and YouTube is the same TWW podcast. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing, uh, uh, we have a Monday night review of the game of the weekend, so that'll be going out. And no doubt we'll be talking with smiles on our faces after three points from uh, Hillsborough, you know. And uh, and yeah, we, we, we'll be all over it, and we're, we're not too, uh, we're not too shouty when we win as well. So, you know, you, you won't be getting that much hammer, Joe. Yeah. Maybe not. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's good to hear, mate. Hopefully you don't have smiles on your faces, but I hope you have smiles on your face for the rest of the season, mate. And what I always say at the end of the, end of the show is thank you for coming on, mate. It's been a pleasure. It has been a good chat as well. Obviously, we've, we've just done your podcast as well. So if you do yeah. want to uh, go and check that out, feel free. Obviously, you've just told everyone where they can find you. Uh, but that was a good chat as well. So it's always good to have a good guest on, mate. So I really do appreciate you coming on. Um, but good luck for the rest of the season, mate. Just after Saturday. No problem. Thank you. <laughs>